this is very important. You've heard this phrase as well, called the first 100 days. This was kind of a publicity gimmick, but it was also a reality. During my first 100 days, I will solve almost everything. Three months. Today, newspapers always make a big deal. So the president's been in there for 100 days. What has he done? And we got to list off all these things. Now, if you pause for a half a second, if you pause for a half a second, this is based off a presumption that what should the president do during those first three months? He should be fixing everything. What does that say about who's responsible? It's not just the fact that you have this uh, left and right view of the economy. Just to let you know, FDR is a little bit left on some things. He's also a little bit right on some things. He is what we would call a pragmatist. Does anybody understand what a pragmatist is? They're right in the middle. Not right in the middle. It's whatever works. Whatever works. I'm going to take some things from here, see if it works. I'm going to take some things from here and see whether it works. And that's totally FDR. He's very much a pragmatist. Now, here's the point. Prior to FDR, it's not simply a matter of whether or not the government should get involved with the economy. There was also this issue of whether the states and local authorities should have primary responsibility or whether the federal government should have primary responsibility. In the 1920s, if you said the federal government was going to come in and take over your river, who would be really upset about this? You would. All the people along that river and the state. Because the state would say, what are you doing coming into here? This is our responsibility. This transition from Coolidge Hoover to FDR changes the expectations of the federal government. And in the process, we get all these agencies. This is what you've heard this before. The size of the federal government expands. When we say size, what that means is that literally, the number of agencies, the number of people that are working for the government just blooms. It's not the first time that this happened. During World War I is really the first time this happened because we needed to have lots of war boards, lots of people coordinated the resources so they go off to World War I. But when the war is over, what happened to those war boards and all those other resources? They go back to normal. What FDR is saying is we're going to use the same tactics, but we're going to do it all the time. It's not temporary. It's the new normal. Because if you have a problem, we will fix it. Now, trick question. Finish all this up. How long did this new philosophy have dominance? in American society. How about I reverse this question? When has Coolidge's and... Briefly in the 1980s, that was it. Even, and Reagan did, but even then it was only limited. This is the new dominant. And why is that? This goes back to what we were talking at the very beginning. Entitlements. That's why. It's hard to work out entitlements because people would get upset. It's very easy to it's very easy to say, I'm gonna give you more stuff. It's very difficult to say, well, we're gonna fix the system in the long run so that it can sustain itself. This is always more sellable. As soon as we have an election. As soon as we have lots of people voting for this, it's very difficult to change. Now, I'm two minutes over, but give me 30 more seconds. Because it's a tiny bit bigger than this. Not that much, but a tiny bit bigger. But that means 
is that the reason why FDR does this is not because he's a monster, not because he's greedy, not because of any of this other stuff, but because in the old days, under the Coolidge and Hoover, we were primarily a rural society. And so where was most of your governments based off of? Very local. In our modern society, it's primarily urban. We saw this in the election of 1896. And so where is most of your? You have centralized state, and you have a lot of federal role in this. What FDR represents is a shift in priorities. I mentioned this. During the Great Depression, the farmers, were they starving? No, they, they may not be getting a lot of money because of the uh, higher yields and whatnot, but they weren't ever starving. What about if you're living in Chicago and you're fired? How do you feed yourself? You don't. And so you need to have some type of soup kitchen. Well, that allowed for a certain time. So instead, how about you have some federal program that gives you money? This is an urban phenomenon. As our society goes from one to the other, this becomes dominant, and it has not gone back since. Questions, comments, words of wisdom? What do I want you to read about? This. I want you to read about this, but I want you to read about World War II. This is it. So if you are confused, you've got to see me. Otherwise, World War II is going to So read about the beginning, the start, and the coming of we will see you guys uh, on Monday, the day of the moon.